objectives of this talk are really, I want to do two things. Number one is define the challenges in the detection and surveillance of bladder cancer using the currently FDA-approved biomarkers that we have. And then secondly, to evaluate the newer biomarkers that we have uh, for the detection and surveillance of bladder cancer. Um, and so I just have three-part uh, outline, really background, current markers and new markers. And so just to give a little background about the topic, uh, the gold standard for the detection of bladder cancer is, as we all know, it is cystoscopy. Um, despite uh, the convenience of cystoscopy, it does have some uh, pitfalls to it. It's, it's invasive. It does have overall low morbidity, but it's not insignificant. Some patients can develop dysuria, frequency urgency afterwards. There's a lot of anxiety with cystoscopy. And it's uh, certainly operator dependent, depending on who, you know, who's looking at it, how much experience you have, and how inflamed the bladder is. You really have variable sensitivities and specificity, so it's not really perfect. Uh, because of that, we have advanced uh, and enhanced detection techniques that can identify some of these things, which include narrow band imaging and uh, fluorescent cystoscopy. But despite having cystoscopy, uh, we need additional biomarkers to complement this uh, to help us better take care of our patients. And so what is the ideal biomarker? So if you look at the ideal bladder cancer biomarker, you want it to be one of many things. Uh, it needs to be cost effective, give you a timely result. You, you know, a point of care test would be most ideal should have high sensitivity, high specificity, it should be able to change your management, it should be standard, standardizable and also have uh, robust performance. And so with bladder cancer, because there's so many different settings, the, the, the uh, performance of all these tests will vary. The sensitivity, assessed specificity, negative predictive value will vary if you're in a screening population, if you're in initial diagnosis of hematuria, or if you're following someone with bladder cancer, because the prevalence of the disease will change and therefore it changes these characteristics. So it's, it's kind of a moving target and it's hard to really pin down one good test because there's so many different options. And so in this quest for the ideal biomarker, you know, what do we want to accomplish? Uh, you know, a few things we can talk about is can we replace the use of cystoscopy either in the uh, initial detection phase or in the surveillance phase? Can we enhance the performance of our cystoscopy with additional information from these biomarkers? And, and lastly, can we avoid unnecessary biopsies when we think that something leads us, a, a test leads us to go to the operating room, do we have to go for everyone? If there's a test that can adjudicate that, that would be nice. So really to go through some of the current FDA approved markers that we have, we'll start with cytology. So cytology is kind of the mainstay. Um, urine test is probably the most widely used. Um, but it's got some pitfalls in itself. It's, re it's very, very specific, meaning that if you have a positive test, you can rely on it. There are very few false positives. So you can see here the sensitivity can be really high, particularly for high grade. So that's where its main use is. It's got variable sensitivity um, overall, and it's not very good for uh, low grade tumors. So really it's, it's good for high grade tumors, and it, it really only makes sense when you have a positive test. So that's what we've been using. Uh, as I mentioned, it's got some the pros or it's specific. It's sensitive generally for high grade. It's not invasive, but it does have some cons. Um, not very good for low grade tumors. It depends on your cytopathologist. If you have a good one, they'll you know they can pick them out. If you don't, it's it's uh, not very helpful. And then this is what I always you know usually uh, uh, fret with is when you get an atypical cytology. You know what do you do with that? You know I, I don't know. And after BCG, a lot of atypical cytologies uh, occur, and so it it makes it kind of challenging to interpret this. Lastly, it's costly because you have to have a cytologist look at it. So what do we have in addition to that? These are the currently FDA-approved uh, uh, cleared tests. There's two protein-based tests, meaning they look at the urine for certain protein. There's the BTA and the NMP. They look at the basement membrane. One's a basement membrane antigen. The other is a nuclear matrix protein. These are found more in patients with bladder cancer and uh, the indications for diagnosis and surveillance. Uh, the issue with these is they have a high false positive rate because all it takes is some inflammation, hematuria, concentrated urine, you'll have more protein in it, and it'll, it'll trigger a false positive. So then you might be taking these patients to the OR unnecessarily. Um, what about the cell-based test? Uh, there's the immunocyte and Eurovision. Eurovision is probably one of the more common ones that we use in the setting of BCG, um, but they look at fluorescence um, labeled antibodies. And really the Eurovision I think is, is, uh, is good in patients that have been BCG treated. The performance, if you look at them overall, and this is a pretty busy slide, but if you look at NMP, BTA, if you look at the Eurovision, if you look at the immunocyte, uh, 
They don't have specificity that's as good as cytology. So cytology will always beat that. And the sensitivity doesn't really, it's not really uh, much of a home run either. And so all these tests, for those reasons, really haven't pushed themselves to mainstream for bladder cancer. Well, what do the guidelines say? If you look at the European guidelines, they have some statements in there. None of these markers have been accepted for diagnosis or, or follow-up and routine practice. Uh, they talk about how, yeah, they're a little better sensitivity, but it's a, a, at a cost of lower spe specificity compared to cytology. Benign conditions such as inflammation or hematuria can influence these tests. And it also, there's so much variability depending on the clinical context. If you use it for screening versus monitoring bladder cancer, you're going to get two different numbers for your, for your sensitivity specificity. And so not recommended for screening. And really, if you're exploring hematuria, you can't replace a cystoscopy. What, is, what do the AUA guidelines say? Uh, pretty similar, guideline statement number nine says you shouldn't use biomarkers in place of cystoscopy. Uh, number 10 says if you have a low risk bladder cancer patient, you shouldn't routinely use a biomarker. Low risk patients aren't really gonna um, you know, have much of a change in any of these biomarker tests. And then the last one is if you have a patient um, with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, you can use biomarkers to adjudicate uh, equivocal cytology and you can also use them in the setting of BCG, where it's oftentimes the cytology doesn't really help you much because sometimes it comes back atypical. So I want to highlight a study by uh, Dr. Kamat um, looking at fish. So he got fishes at, in, in patients that had uh, BCG treatment at baseline, six weeks, three months, and six months. And he noticed that patients that had a positive result were at higher risk for having a recurrence. It doesn't mean that if you have a positive result, you 100% have a chance of recurrence but you certainly are at a higher risk. And so based off that, if you have a positive fish, your recurrence and progression rates are higher than those with a negative fish. And so that's a, certainly a way that you can use this test um, to help, uh, help stratify patients uh, undergoing BCG. And the last thing I wanna do is highlight some of the newer markers that we have um, out. So there's a few of them out there that I wanna talk about, just four in particular. Uh, one is Assure MDX that utilizes DNA methylation and some mutation analysis. This is used for gross hematuria patients, so more of kind of a detection of bladder cancer phase. CX bladder um, has three different tests that you can use for the, the diagnosis and also for the surveillance of bladder cancer. It utilizes um, mRNA found in the urine. Expert bladder cancer uses mRNA in the urine as well also for this uh, surveillance of bladder cancer. And then the last one is Epicheck, um, which utilizes DNA methylization, methylation of 15 different markers that they have. And so I, I just wanted to kind of go through some of the relevant uh, literature around this, and they're, they're pretty uh, new kind of thing. So Assure MDX is good for microscopic and macroscopic hematuria. So the patient that comes to your office that, uh, that you want to detect bladder cancer on, and so it uses DNA methylation of these three genes and mutation analysis of these you just need about two cc's. And what's the purpose of it is can you obviate a cystoscopy? Can you say, hey, if I order this test, um, can I just not do a cysto? All the guidelines say no. Of course, they didn't incorporate these newer tests. And so they have three different cohorts, a discovery cohort, a retrospective validation cohort, and a prospective validation study. Uh, two have been published. The last one was, uh, was presented at the AUA this last year. And so basically, if you look at the three different studies here, shows a high negative predictive value, meaning if you have a negative test, you probably don't have bladder cancer, and the numbers are pretty uh, pretty high. And so if you look at the details of the, the last study, they concluded that 88% of patients may be spared from cysto given the high negative predictive value. So again, negative test, you can hang your hat on, unlike cytology, whereas it doesn't matter if it's negative, if it's positive, you can pretty much hang your hat on it saying that they probably have cancer. Um, what about CX bladder? So CX bladder uh, uses PCR to look at these five mRNA markers. There's three different uh, categories. One of them is triage. It looks like it cut off a little bit here, but triage is for lower risk patients with hematuria to detect bladder cancer. And it incorporates ge the genetic information as well as some of the patient information, such as age, sex, smoking characteristics. The detect is a PCR, and that's good for patients with gross hematuria with higher risk features. So somebody that's older, a smoker, chemical exposure, macroscopic hematuria, that's kind of the test you'd use there. And the last one is monitor, and that's for the surveillance of patients uh, that have a diagnosis of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. And so 
If you look at the triage, again, this is the lower risk patients. It combines the G, which is the genetics, and P is the phenotype, meaning the age, uh, the gender, smoking history, hematuria history, to kind of uh, give you an idea um, of what the risk is. And so if you look at the performance of this, a study was, was published in uh, 2015 in BMC Urology. And at 587 patients, they had a very good negative predictive value. Again, it's high, high negative predictive value, 98.5. So if you have a negative test, you can hang your hat on and say they probably do not have bladder cancer. Well, what about detect? Detect is good in higher risk patients. So the gross hematuria patient that has risk factors, it's older smoking history, chemical exposure, et cetera. So in a cohort of 485 patients where they compared CX bladder with NMP and cytology, um, the CX bladder had overall better sensitivity, um, and the specificity was almost as good, but not quite as good as cytology. So again, um, better sensitivity, better to you know, rule out rule out disease. And the last one is monitor. Monitor, um, uh, they recently published an article with 763 patients. They had a training cohort, and then they validated it as well. And if you look at this, again, sensitivity is high, negative predictive value is high. And you can hang your hat on a negative test that, you know, they probably don't have it. Now, the issue with all of these tests is that negative predictive value is heavily dependent on the prevalence of the disease. So if you have a low prevalence population, your negative predictive value will be artificially elevated or artificially higher. And so certainly screening populations or patients you want to detect bladder cancer with gross hematuria, it, it will influence that negative predictive value. Uh, expert bladder assay, again, uses MR, mRNA, uses real-time PCR, four cc's. I think the turnaround time for this is about 90 minutes. Um, if, uh, in a study published uh, by Vallenberg in European Urology just recently, it showed um, also a good negative predictive value, 0 0.93. And then the last one I'll quickly uh, talk about is Epicheck. This uses DNA methyl methylation of 15 different biomarkers. You need about 10 cc's of urine here. The, uh, there's a score, it's called the Epi score, that's calculated based off of the amount of methylation. It's directly proportional to it. And if you have a score greater than 60, it's considered a positive result. Um, and so they published a study, European Urology, um, by Witches. They had 440 patients. Most, about 40% were low grade. The remainder were more higher risk patients. And overall, if you look at the characteristics here, if you exclude low grade, it had a really uh, about a 90% sensitivity. The negative predictive value, again, uh, was also high up in the, up in the 90%. So th these are kind of the newer biomarkers that we have, again, relying on methylation, relying on genetic mutations, relying on uh, mRNA, and they have various indications, either the detection of bladder cancer or the monitoring of patients with bladder cancer. I don't think any one of these will, will, will be the magic bullet that's going to replace all of it, but certainly it's, it's a start, and I think there's certainly more biomarkers that are, that are coming through. So just to conclude everything... The ideal bladder cancer marker, the one that I outlined that, uh, that would be the most ideal, is probably still not here yet, still remains elusive. Uh, there are numerous tests available, um, but most of the current ones that we have that are FDA approved aren't really routinely used other than, I think, cytology and in patients with uh, BCG, the Eurovision fish test. So I think in general, the use of any single biomarker probably will be inadequate, but it, depending on this clinical scenario, a combination of the biomarkers may inform your uh, decision-making in these patients. These newer tests, these methylation-based tests, mutation-based tests, um, may inform decisions on who to perform cystoscopy on if one in, present, in patients presenting with hematuria, and also the frequency of cystoscopy uh, and surveillance in patients um, who have a diagnosis of, of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So thank you very much.